In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a method to calculate 95% confidence intervals for Cohen's D. As I mentioned in the textbook, it's a little complicated to estimate a confidence interval for Cohen's D because it has to use a distribution that isn't commonly available and is a little more complicated than other types of distributions. And so I devised a method to estimate confidence intervals for Cohen's D that is robust across a number of circumstances including non-normally distributed data. So to recapitulate what Cohen's D is, this is a formula that will give you a point estimate of Cohen's D, which is mean 1 minus mean 2 divided by the standard deviation of 1 and 2 averaged. So we speak of standard deviation differences between means when we have Cohen's D. Now I should say that Hedges G is what technically we should be calling the difference between two means when we divide it by sample standard deviations in terms of their average. So just assume that everything I'm mentioning here would equally apply to Hedges G in the sense that I'm only ever dealing with samples and you could convert these Cohen's D values to Hedges G based on that slight modification that I talk about in the textbook. For the remainder of this discussion I'll be talking about Cohen's D because that's typically how people talk about it in the context of confidence intervals. So an important attribute associated with this discussion is that Cohen's D and the independent sample t-test is actually statistically identical to the points by serial correlation with respect to the ultimate results that you get from the analysis. And a point by serial correlation is the correlation between a dichotomous variable and a continuous variable. So if you think of an independent sample t-test, there's a dichotomous independent variable and a continuous dependent variable. So the example of whether people are wearing glasses or not, that's the dichotomy, and the continuous dependent variable is how attractive we might rate the faces to be on a scale of 1 to 7. Well, you can actually test the null hypothesis of an association between whether somebody's wearing glasses or not and how much they are perceived to be intelligent. And let me actually show you how to do that. It's actually very simple. So this is the, I'll show you the independent sample t-test I did with these data previously. So this is going back to the example of rated intelligence and whether the person was wearing glasses or not, rated by two different groups of people. So 0 and 1 are the grouping variables. And we get, or I should say, the values for the two groups. And we can see that I rejected the null hypothesis of equal perceived intelligence with a p equal 0 0.026 and wearing glasses has a higher perceived intelligence level, p equal 0 0.026. So what would happen if I just ran a correlation between a dichotomous variable like glasses and a continuous variable like intelligence? It's known as a point by serial correlation, even though I'm really just going to be doing a Pearson correlation on these data. We just happen to call it a point by serial correlation in that circumstance. And you can see that the correlation is 0.248 and the p-value, most importantly, at least for this connection, is 0 0.026 and it's 0 0.026 here. And that's not a coincidence. If I blow this out by further decimal places, let's just say if I go to six decimal places, I should still get the same p-value from both of these analyses which seem different but are actually fundamentally similar. So I get 0 0.026433 and 0 0.026433. So the point by serial can be used as a substitute of the independent sample t-test generally speaking. When the variances are not equal, maybe it becomes a little more complicated, but when variance are, certainly when uh, sample sizes are equal, it's no problem, and when variances are equal, it's no problem. I guess the next point is that given that there's a connection between Cohen's D and the point by serial correlation, I can convert a point by serial correlation into a Cohen's D value. In fact, this is the formula you could use to calculate Cohen's D from R. So this correlation of 0.248 could be inputted into here, 0.248 squared, 1 minus 0.248 squared, and we have the total sample size multiplied by total sample size minus 2 divided by sample size of group 1, sample size of group 0, or whatever, whatever order you want to put them in, and then multiplied by 1 minus r squared. That will give you Cohen's D. That's the connection between the correlation and Cohen's D. 
Now that raises the prospect of calculating confidence intervals for Cohen's D based on the point by serial correlations that you get as upper and lower bounds through bootstrapping. With the lower and upper bound correlations, I just have to solve this formula and I'll get the lower bound Cohen's D and I'll get the upper bound Cohen's D. So let's try that as an example. So no glasses versus yes glasses, perceived intelligence study, the Cohen's D was negative 0.51. That's the point estimate. So 4.03 minus 4.43 divided by the average of these standard deviations gave me a Cohen's D of negative 0.51. Now, how can I get the lower bound and the upper bound? Like I said in the chapter, it's complicated to get it directly from Cohen's D. But what you could do is just get the lower bound and upper bound point by serial correlation and then solve for the formula and get the upper and lower Cohen's D. So let's do that. Here's me actually showing you that the formula works and you get 0.51. So let's get the lower and upper bound correlations, the point by serial correlation, bivariate. I need to click on bootstrap and click bias corrected accelerated and probably 2000 replications or number of samples. Click OK. So now it's going to take a minute or so to calculate the bootstrap standard error and the lower bound and upper bound point by serial correlations. And here we have them. We have got the lower bound of 0 0.044 and the upper bound of 0.422. Now these are 95% confidence intervals for the point estimate of 0.248. And now I want to calculate the lower and upper bound confidence intervals for the point estimate Cohen's D of 0.51. Now the fact that it's negative here and positive here is irrelevant. It's arbitrary whether we're dealing with negative or positive Cohen's D's, so long as we know what direction the means are with respect to our interpretation. So instead of using this formula and having to calculate it by hand, what I did is I created a, an Excel sheet that does it for me. So here's the formula inputted in the Excel function, and all I need is sample size, and the point by serial correlation. Now I should say that the Cohen's D formula that I'm using here to get Cohen's D from the point by serial correlation, it takes unequal sample size into consideration. And that's very important because there are formulae floating around in textbooks and online that will suggest that you can convert the point by serial into Cohen's D, but they do not often, they do not take the possibility that you might have unequal sample sizes. So it's really important that you use this formula here to do your conversion because it'll be accurate if the sample sizes are equal and it'll be accurate if they are not. So now that I've got the right formula and I've got the lower bound point by serial correlation of 0 0.044, I can put that into here and I've already got the sample size of 40 and 40. That was actually the sample size for my two groups, 40 and 40. And the lower bound is 0 0.044, the point by serial correlation. And that gives me a lower bound Cohen's D of 0 0.09, say. Now, the next one I would take is the upper bound. So the upper bound of the 95% confidence interval is 0.422. And so now I'm going to have to input that into the formula, 0 0.087. Let me just write that down. Now I've got the same sample size. And I've got to put the correlation in the upper bound, 0 0.422, 0 0.422 and I get 0.919. So now I've got both the lower bound and the upper bound Cohen's D. If we conducted this study many times over and over again, we would expect 95% of the Cohen's D's to be somewhere between 0 0.087 and 0.919. So that is a method of estimating Cohen's D confidence intervals for a point estimate based on bootstrapping, which I would expect to be robust to violations of, of normality.